He is the man at the center of every global policy move, the Greece crisis, the yuan revaluation, and global financial regulation. IMF Managing Director Dominique Strauss-Kahn, it's a pleasure to have you on NDTV, sir. Thank you. Let me start, Mr. Strauss-Kahn, with your statement coming fresh from the press conference where you say the world is still a dangerous place. You know, the world uh, or the rest of uh, the economists in Wall Street does believe that the dangers of a double-dip recession are over. You think otherwise. Well, you know, the good news are that uh, the recovery is going faster and coming sooner than expected. But uh, beyond this good news, you have a lot of downsize risk, including the fact that unemployment is still very high in most advanced economies. And as this is a threat to the recovery because with high unemployment, of course, uh, you have a low uh, private demand and consumption is not uh, picking up fast enough. At the same time, you have still risk on the, the financial sector, where are the reforms going on, but in our view, not really fast enough. You have the sovereign debt problem, which in some places is very, very worrying, and some others can be managed even more easily. And then the last point is that in emerging markets, uh, because of the huge amount of liquidity available in the global economy, you have a very important uh, uh, capital inflows going to emerging markets with the risk of creating uh, asset price bubbles and uh, it's a kind of paradox. It's a problem when the, the inflows are too big because of the risk of bubbles and also a threat if the, there's a sudden stop in the capital inflows because then you create problem in the, in the country. So you have a lot of downside risk which uh, make us thinking that uh, we're not out of the woods. So of course the news are rather good but we shouldn't believe that the crisis is over. Moving to the global bank tax that IMF seems to propose, not just one, actually two of them, how would you propose to take this financial regulation and build consensus across the entire G20? How will you implement it? Well, that's the real problem. You know, we faced the crisis rather successfully because of an unprecedented uh, level of uh, cooperation among countries. But this cooperation, I won't say has vanished, but the momentum is not as strong now as it was uh, one year ago because uh, people were scared at this time. They're less scared today. So they're going back to their own domestic problem. And in this field of uh, uh, financial sector reform, it's very obvious. Uh, many countries are trying to develop their own plan, which makes sense from their own point of view. But uh, the risk is uh, the risk of risk inconsistencies in what is going by the U.S., by the European Union, by the Japanese or others. So we are asking very strongly for a more coordinated global plan in terms of uh, improving the regulation and supervision of the financial sector, including this possible uh, taxation of the, of the financial sector. But uh, I'm a bit worried that uh, it's not going to be so easy to rebuild the consensus the plans by different countries are not that different, but they're somewhat different and sometimes they're really inconsistent. What about the danger of currency pegs in these emerging market economies, particularly with respect to the yuan revaluation? Well, China, India are huge economies, so uh, the risk of capital inflows creating problem is not that big. I was more concerned about other economies, smaller economies, let's talk about Indonesia, for instance, or others where you have this capital inflows too, with less uh, uh, tools to deal with. Nevertheless, the question of uh, the peg and the, 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 the value of...